All right, the next lesson is on standard deviation. All right, so standard deviation is also another measurement that we can apply to a set of data. Now, standard deviation is uh, it's basically a, it's a number that comes up uh, when we, once we calculate it, and it measures the spread of the data. OK, so how far apart they're spread out on average, to be honest. Um, and so the smaller the standard deviation, so the smaller number we get for standard deviation uh, means the data is more consistent. Right, which logically makes sense, right? If something's if you're consistent, that means there's less spread, which means there's a smaller standard deviation. All right. So the formula for standard deviation is this <laughs> this thing. All right. So yes, it may look very overwhelming right now when you first look at it. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of letters. There's no numbers here. Well, there's a two there and everything. But um, you know what? Don't worry about it. I am going to walk you through how to calculate a standard deviation um, using this formula. OK, so um, so if once we break this down, it's actually not as bad as you, uh, you may think it looks overall right now. All right. Um, so anyways, let's just jump right into it. OK, so I'm going to calculate the standard deviation of this following set of data Okay, using this formula. OK, so just like um, bed mass, right, order of operations, what we want to do first is through this whole formula, we just want to hunt out the brackets first. OK, so again, we're going to do bed mass. So that's the key for all calculations. And when, according to bed mass, the first thing that we want to look at are brackets. OK, so if you look here, there is a set of brackets, right? And inside the brackets, it's X minus X bar. OK, so let's just highlight that. So right there is the brackets. So that's the very first thing we're going to do. OK, we need to calculate X minus X bar. All right, so it would help that if it would help that uh, I explain to you what X bar is or what the X is actually, but both of these things are. Uh, so the X bar. Is actually the mean. OK, so in terms of calculating the standard deviation, the very first thing we're going to do is we are actually going to need to calculate the mean or the average of this data. OK, so uh, so that's your first step. So I'll just number that number one here. We're going to calculate the mean. And if you recall from the last lesson, the mean is basically what we do is we add up all the numbers and then we divide by the number of terms. Now in the previous lesson, we put everything in order, um, but when it comes down to actually calculating the mean, we don't really need to put anything in order. Right? Now, the reason we put stuff in order in the last lesson is because it's helped to find the other stuff. Right, the median, the mode, as well as the range. All right, but in this case, to calculate the mean, we can we don't really need to put them in order. We can just add them up. Okay, so four plus seven plus twelve, five, nine, and fourteen. And then we're gonna divide that by the number of terms, which is six. Okay, so in this case, mean, or in other words, actually, I should probably use X bar is going to equal. All right, so let's just uh, pull out the calculator again. Just close some of these windows here. No, I don't want the calendar, no. <laughs> calculator. All right, so let's, um, let's add these values together and then divide by six. Okay, so four plus seven plus 12 plus five nine and 14. OK, so we get a total of 51. And to the 51, we're going to need to divide it by 6. So X bar equals 51 divided by 6, which is 8.5. All right, so here this is X bar. The value of X bar is 8.5. So what this formula is saying, let me just scroll it over here. Um, so what this formula is saying is that first thing we want to do is we want to calculate X minus X bar. OK, so we want to take each one of these and subtract the mean from each one. OK, so um, basically what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to make some columns. All right, so X minus X bar. <coughs> so underneath this column. First calculation, I was going to go 4 minus 8.5. And that is equal to negative 4.5. OK, so. Uh, excuse me, I'm just gonna drink some water. All right, so I took the four, subtracted the mean, I get negative 
and do the same thing with a 7. So 7 minus 8.5, so that's negative 1.5. Uh, 12 minus 8.5, which is 3.5. 5 minus 8.5, which is negative 3.5. Uh, what else? We got 9 and 14. Okay, so 9 minus 8.5, which is uh, 0 0.5. And then 14 minus 8.5, which is... Uh, 5.5. All right, so hopefully I did that correctly. I'm just going to do a quick little scan here. Make sure I did. And yep, I believe I did. All right, so so basically, again, the first inside the brackets here, it says x minus x bar. So you're taking each one of these x's, these are all x's, and subtracting the mean from each one. Okay. All right, now, next thing you'll notice here. Is we got this kind of funky sign here of this Greek letter, but we also have a square. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to actually square each one of these numbers. All right, so the next step, we're going to take x minus x bar and square each one. Okay, so so basically I take the negative 4.5. Oops, negative 4.5. So negative 4.5, and I want to square it which is right this button right here. Okay, so I get positive 20.25. And I'm going to do the same with negative 1.5. Now, the thing with uh, 1.5, I actually don't really need to punch a negative here because uh, mathematically, right, negative times negative is still positive. Positive times positive is positive. So uh, whether I square 1.5 or negative 1.5, I'm actually going to get the same number. Okay, so if I square positive one point, actually let's do this, I'll just show you. All right, so if I had negative 1.5 and I square it, I get 2.25. But even if I didn't put the negative sign, if I just want 1.5 and squared it, I just get the exact same number. All right, so with these negative values, you don't actually really have to punch the negative in. You can just square the number itself. Right, so 3.5 squared is the next one. That's 12.25. Uh, negative 3.5 squared is also going to be 12.25. Okay, so negative times negative make a positive, positive times positive obviously make a positive. Okay, next up, 0.5 squared, 0 0.25, and 5.5 squared is 30.25. Okay, so um, yeah, so you go from the first column here. To the next column, basically what we're doing is we're just squaring each one of these numbers and we're getting these ones here. All right, so we've taken care of, let me go highlight that part. We've taken care of the squared part. Next up, and this is probably, this is definitely new to you guys, but when you see now, now this sign here, this means to add up. Okay, so we want to add up all of these numbers here. We want to add up all the x minus x bar squareds. All right, so basically, if we tally up all these numbers. Now, actually, if you've got, if you work through your spreadsheets, you may, uh, Microsoft Excel, you might see the button like this, right? Where it's a sigma button, it means the same thing. So if you click on it on a spreadsheet, it'll actually add up the numbers in that row or column. All right, same thing here. So basically, it's saying add up these numbers. Uh, so we want to add up this column here. So I am going to sum it. So it's, um, so let me just write that here. So sum of x minus x bar squared is going to equal, okay, so I'm going to add up all those numbers, 20.25, 2.25 plus 12.25 plus 12.25. All right, so we got 0.25 plus uh, 30.25. All right, so when I add all these up, I do get 77.5 as my total. All right, so scrolling back to the formula here. Okay, so that is basically this value up here. All right, next up, we're going to divide it by n. Okay, so um, actually, you know what I'm going to do here? I'm just going to write the formula again, just write it down here. 
And I'm just going to copy it down here. So sigma again is equal to the square root of the sum of x minus x bar squared divided by m. All right, so what we've done now, the 77.5 is this value here. Okay. So just working this out, sigma is going to equal the square root. All right, so that highlighted in yellow is 77.5. And I want to divide it by n, okay, the number of terms. And we see that the number of terms here is 6. Right, there's 6 of them. So we're going to divide this by 6. All right, so sigma is going to equal the square root of. All right, so the 77.5, we're going to divide it by 6. Uh, we get 12.916. I'm just going to put 12.916 dot, dot, dot. Okay, so again, whenever I write the dot, 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 that means that um, I'm going to leave the number in the calculator. Okay, I'm not going to say, I, generally what we want to do is I'm going to save the rounding to the very end. All right, so I'm going to leave this in my calculator, uh, even though I just wrote out the first three decimal places. All right, so sigma, the final answer is basically we need to do the square root of this number. All right, so punch in the square root button, and you can see that it's 3.593, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to round it to 3.6. Okay, so the standard deviation for this set of data is 3.6. Cool. All right, so there's just one that just this one example for you. I just kind of walked through um, how to calculate the standard deviation by hand. All right. Cool. So that's it. That's the lesson.